What's up guys, my name is Brandon and you just got your brand new M1 iPad Pro. You've unboxed it, you've gone through the setup process, maybe installed some cool new applications, but now you might be wondering what to do next. What can I do to take full advantage of this absolute beast of a tablet? So in this video, I wanted to share the first 12 things you should do after getting your brand new M1 iPad Pro. So these are gonna be tips, tricks, and just kind of things that you need to know about this iPad. So we're gonna start off with the basics and then we'll get more technical, especially when it comes to the new features in the iPad Pro this year. So the very first thing you guys should do after getting your new iPad Pro is to get familiar with the gesture controls in iPad OS. So this is mainly going to be geared towards new iPad owners or just iPad owners who may not be taking full advantage of everything that iPad OS has to offer when it comes to gestures. Like for instance, you Using four fingers on the home screen to pull up the multitasking and you could do the same when you're inside of an application and you want to go home very quickly you could do that instead of swiping you know from the bottom right here and of course you can also go from app to app by just simply dragging on this bottom bar right there just like you can on the iPhone also if you have an Apple pencil there is a cool little shortcut or a cool little gesture you can do to take a screenshot. And all you need to do is simply drag up from the bottom right corner and it takes a screenshot right there. And you can mark up from here as well. You could type on it. You know, you can also use a double tap on the Apple Pencil itself to switch between the pencil and the eraser just like that. And then if you're typing somewhere and you want to have a smaller keyboard, all you need to do is simply pinch in on the keyboard and you get this little floating keyboard right here. You can move this around as well if you drag on the bottom like that and to make it bigger again, just pinch out and it makes it back to the regular size. And there are also a lot of shortcuts and little gestures that you can do when it comes to text as well. So like if you wanted to do text selection, you could just tap twice and it selects that one word right there. And if we wanted to select this entire sentence right here, we just tap three times. So one, two, three, and it selects the entire row, the entire line right there. And then if you do a four tap gesture, it selects the entire paragraph. I don't have any paragraphs in here, but it does select more than the sentence. Now let's say for example, I wanted to copy and paste the sentence right here without actually tapping on copy and paste. All you need is a three finger gesture to pinch. So if I just pinch with three fingers right here, you can see it copied. If I pinch out, it will paste as you can see right there. And we can also use those same three fingers to do a swipe left or right to undo and redo. So if I swipe left right there, you can see it will undo. If I swipe right, it will redo, as you can see by the little alert up top. So there are just a ton of different gestures you can do in iPad OS, and I'm sure there will be more with iPad OS 15 coming very soon as well. But those are just a few of the basic ones that you need to know before you get started on your iPad Pro here. And speaking of gestures, the next thing you guys need to do is take advantage of slide over and split view for multitasking. So this year with the 2021 iPad Pros, we have eight and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we are going to be able to multitask like crazy with these M1 iPad Pros. You should definitely take full advantage of that and be running multiple apps at the same time, especially if you work off of your iPad. So for instance, if I wanted to pull up another application in the split view, all I'd have to do is simply swipe up slowly from the bottom and take something from the dock right here. You could also search for it if you want to. We're just gonna drag, let's just say notes for example, drag right over here to the right and you can see we also have two instances of notes opened as well. So we're just gonna select on this one right here. And also you can drag to see, you know, you can change the size of the applications right there as well. We could also pull up a third application. So if we go to the dock again, and let's just say we wanna pull up, I don't know, let's just say files right here. We take that all the way up to the top right there. You can see we have three different applications open at the same time now just like so. And we can also have a little multitasking pane inside of this window right here, which this is called the slide over menu right here because we can actually slide over and it's gone. We slide back from the right side and it's back right there. And what's really cool is like I said, we can have multiple applications inside of the app switcher in the slide over screen right here. So if I go to the dock right here and I put in, let's just say Apple Music and drag it over into this right here, you can see we can actually go back and forth between files and music just like so. So it's really cool. We could also take this and move this into the split screen view as well. So like if we just do that, it takes over now and that's actually part of the split screen right there instead of being in slide over. And another thing that is really, really useful in iPad OS is the ability to drag and drop all over the OS. So for example, if I have like some files over here and I wanted to drag those into like an email or into a note, 
I could do that very easily. So if I just go ahead and drag and drop this song right here. You can see it'll populate right there inside of my notes and you could do that for everything. The next thing you guys need to do is go ahead and set up Face ID inside of your settings if you did not already do so during the initial setup process. So this year with the M1 iPad Pros, we have a better front facing camera. So not only did it go from seven megapixels to 12 megapixels, we also have a over 120 degree field of view. So we have a much wider camera as well, which means you'll be able to fit more of your face in that camera lens and you're gonna be able to unlock from more angles. So definitely wants to set up Face ID if you have not done so already. You can also have these different options down here like require attention for Face ID and attention aware features. Just read through those and toggle those on or off. Also, you have access to these different things right here. You may want to look at these and maybe not allow access to say your control center from the lock screen. And then you can also set up an alternate appearance if you maybe have like makeup or a wig or you just want somebody else being able to get into your iPad, you could set that right there. You also have reset face ID and all these other things as well. You definitely wanna make sure that password autofill is turned on and use that in Safari. That is a lifesaver. And speaking of that front facing camera, like I said, it did get a big upgrade this year with an improved lens and the wider field of view and thanks to that and thanks to machine learning and the m1 chip as well there's a brand new feature called center stage and this is something you have to try when you get this new ipad because it is awesome so this feature allows the front facing camera to automatically pan and zoom to keep your face in the frame as you move around so this is made possible by machine learning and of course that improved 12 megapixel true depth camera and this works with facetime it works with zoom and it's likely going to work with every other video chatting platform in due time but it works for all of the major ones right now you could even test it out by just going into facetime and kind of moving your face around you don't have to be on a call and you could see how it works but just test this out because it is really cool and this will probably be coming to the iphone later this year as well the next thing i want you guys to know about the m1 ipad pro is that we now have a thunderbolt port on this device, which means that we're gonna be able to connect to more things than ever before, than any previous iPad Pro could connect to. And we're also going to have faster transfer speeds than any previous iPad as well. So we're gonna be able to connect to really fast external drives, you know, Thunderbolt docks, which is something I'm really looking forward to. We're gonna be able to connect to the Pro Display XDR and be able to display in the full 6K quality, which is just insane. You're just gonna have a lot more options with that Thunderbolt port now on the iPad Pro. Now, speaking of that Thunderbolt port, if you do have a USB-C or Thunderbolt drive, like a external hard drive or external SSD like I have right here, go ahead and plug that in and get familiar with how it works inside of the files application. So once we have our external drive connected, you can see it right here under locations. We have T5 right there. We could tap on that and you can see all of our folders and everything right here. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, the best thing to do inside of files, the best way to kind of utilize all of this is with the drag and drop feature. So for instance, if you wanted to move files from one place to another, even just two different places inside of files, you could do that very easily. So I'm gonna open up another instance of files right here. If I wanted to go to like a different directory, so if I wanted to go to, let's just say a different folder, and I'm gonna go into this battery test folder into audio, and I'm just gonna take this 30 megabyte file and drag it over to this little test folder that I just made right there. And it's just a simple drag and drop, just like you do on a computer. Of course, you could do this like in the notes application and emails to attach files. Just dragging and dropping is so effective and so useful, especially when it comes to productivity and just doing things fast on the iPad, especially when it comes to external drives and moving files back and forth. Now, another thing to know about the files application, especially when you hook up you know, external storage, is to know about the locations right here. So up top, it starts with recents, which is very self-explanatory, just means that these are the recent files we've looked at or opened. Then we have location. So on my iPad means just exactly what it says, on my iPad, it's not in the cloud anywhere. So if you want to keep something on your iPad and only on your iPad, make sure to save it to on my iPad because everywhere else is going to be connected to your iCloud drive and you know it's gonna show up on your computer and everywhere else where you are signed in. 
So iCloud Drive and all these other locations right here are going to be for that. You could also add different ones right here as well, like Google Drive if you wanted to. And then for those of you who don't know, we do also have a document scanner in here as well. If you tap these little three dots, you connect, connect to a server and you could also scan documents by pressing that and that makes scanning your documents and sending it over email as a PDF much, much easier than it has been in the past. So definitely hook up your external storage and get familiar with how files works and dragging and dropping to different applications. It's very useful. And again, it's gonna be much faster here with the M1 iPad Pro. The next thing you guys need to do is test out the new Liquid Retina XDR display if you got the 12.9 inch model. So the 12.9 inch model got that brand new mini LED display, which is going to be much brighter and have more you know, contrasty colors and just an overall better picture but the 11 inch model stuck with the same display as the 2020 model last year. So if you have the 12.9 inch model, definitely go ahead and test out this new Liquid Retina XDR display, watch some movies, go into Apple TV, watch some HDR content and be amazed at how good it looks. And if you combine it with spatial audio, you are going to be mind blown at how good the experience is. And if you're wondering just how bright this iPad Pro gets, the max full screen brightness is 1000 nits, which is already crazy. But if you're watching HDR content, the peak brightness is 1600 nits which is just absolutely insane. It's so bright. So you're gonna be able to, you know, use this outdoors with ease and the direct sunlight and be able to see just fine on your iPad. It's also going to be great for just a lot of different movie watching and just media watching in general. It's going to be very, very useful for. The next thing you guys want to do is go ahead and configure your cellular data if you have the Wi-Fi plus cellular model. So this year with the 2021 iPad Pros, we get 5G support. So you will have 5G capabilities on this new iPad Pro. However, you may not want to always use that, especially if you're not in an area where you actually get 5G coverage. So you wanna go into the cellular data tab right here underneath of Bluetooth. And from here, you'll get three options, either 5G on, 5G auto, or LTE. So 5G on just means it's going to use 5G whenever it's available, even if it's a really weak signal and it's gonna cause you to really hurt your battery it's just going to use it no matter what it's not going to care about your battery life but 5g auto will actually take into account your battery life and it's only going to connect to 5g if it's actually a strong signal and then of course lte is what i would probably recommend for most people unless you are in a big city and you have a 5g tower like right outside your house or your work I would recommend just keeping on LTE to improve battery life and just make sure your battery life doesn't drain. Otherwise, sometimes it'll keep trying to connect to a 5G tower that may be far away and that could reduce your battery life. But just configure those to your liking. The next thing you guys should do is hook up your PS5 or Xbox Series X controller to the iPad Pro. So iPad OS does support this and you will be able to play certain games with these new next generation console controllers. So what you wanna do is of course, just go into your Bluetooth and you just want to go ahead and put your controller in pairing mode so i have a ps5 controller right here i'm going to put this in pairing mode you can see it flashes really fast right there and you can see it shows dual sense wireless controller shows up under other devices just go ahead and tap on that and it should connect right away and we will be able to play games with these controllers and we also get an indication of the battery life on our controllers as well thanks to the battery widget so i'd recommend setting up your widgets next if you have not done so already so they're over here on the home screen and if they're not there just go into your settings and then go to home screen and dock and you want to make sure that you're on more and not on bigger if you're on bigger right here and you go back you can see you can pull over the widgets but they're not going to be on the actual home screen it's going to kind of bring it over like that and it's not as useful so I would recommend just going to more and then when you go over here, it's kind of just stuck over here in the side And if you go down to edit right here, you can customize what you have inside of the widgets panel right here You also have the tab to keep it on the home screen or not And if you go down you can also tap on customize and you could change the order and add certain widgets in there as well From applications you've installed. So I would recommend customizing this to your liking because it is very very useful You could also tap on the add up here in the top left to add different widgets to this section as well. Kind of just drag and drop right there. And also speaking of that home screen, if we go into our settings right here, and then we go back to the home screen and dock section right here, we have this toggle right here for show, suggested, and recent apps in the dock. And that's going to be these applications over here to the right. So I find this very useful, but I know some people are OCD and they don't like those there. So if you turn that off, it just keeps your dock simple and it doesn't expand out when you have recent apps that you've opened. So that is one thing to consider changing as well. 
well. And the next thing you guys should do is go ahead and customize your control center. So your control center is up here in the top right. When you drag down, you get all of these different toggles in here and you can customize what is actually shown right here. So if you go into the section in control center, you can see, first of all, we have access within apps. So if you want to be able to pull down on this control center from any application, keep that on. I would highly recommend keeping that on and show home controls. They're just going to show you your home accessories. So if you have home kit devices, you can see I have like home pods right here and they appear right there. But if I turn that off, you can see they disappear and we have a much simpler control center right there. I like keeping this on just because I do like connecting to my home kit devices. And then down here we have our control center toggles. So you can see what we have right here. You can move these around and you could add whatever you would like. I definitely like having screen recording and dark mode in there. Those are the two I would recommend the most. Of course, we have flashlight, silent mode things like that as well. If you have an Apple TV, I would definitely recommend adding in the Apple TV remote and music recognition is cool as well. I would definitely recommend adding in music recognition as well. And that's just going to recognize music. So if you hear a song like in a TV show or a movie and you don't know what song it is, but you want to know if you just tap on that, your iPad will listen for it. Then it will show you exactly what song it is in Shazam. You don't even need the Shazam application installed, but it will tell you and you can open it up in Apple Music after you found that song. And then the final thing you guys should do is consider getting the Magic Keyboard. So before you say it, I know it is very expensive, but I'm going to be honest, it takes the iPad to a whole new level for productivity, for gaming, for anything. I mean, even just note taking in college, you know, it's just a game changer. I mean, the Magic Keyboard is worth the money. You have the trackpad built in, you have a backlit keyboard. It's pretty much like you're using a laptop. I absolutely love mine and it does come in a new white color this year. So I like the white. I am kind of afraid of it getting dirty over time, but you know, I'm sure Apple thought about that as well and it's not gonna be as bad as we think. But yeah, I would definitely recommend getting the Magic Keyboard if you can. Same with the Apple Pencil. If you can get both of these, it just makes the experience on the iPad just that much better, especially when you have different gesture controls for the Apple Pencil as well. And same with the Magic Keyboard. You have gestures that you could do on the trackpad of that as well. It's pretty much like you're using a MacBook when you have that Magic Keyboard connected, especially when you have the backlit keyboard at night and you're like typing away. It's just awesome, I love it. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are the first things I would recommend doing. Those are the first things that I did after getting my brand new 2021 M1 iPad Pro. Of course, you wanna go ahead and install applications and things like that. I didn't wanna include that in the list because it's kind of obvious at this point, but definitely go into the App Store and do some exploring around to find applications and just customize your iPad to your liking, get a new wallpaper, spice it up a little bit, do all those fun things. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe for a lot more M1 iPad Pro content coming very, very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.